Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we are going to be talking about how to make your makeup last longer during the competition. It's not only just about using makeups that say they're gonna last long, but also using different techniques and how to make specific products last longer to make sure that throughout all of the rounds that you're doing, you're looking great from the beginning all the way until the end. So without any further ado, let's get into the video. very first step to make sure that your makeup is going to stay all day long is actually going to be with skincare prep. I am going to be starting out with my Clinique Moisture Surge Moisturizer. It does not have to be this moisturizer, it literally can be any moisturizer that you use that is working for your skin. But the most important thing is that you moisturize your skin before you start as a preparation, as just the base. Because if your skin is not moisturized, even if you have oily skin, when you're layering so many different products, it's going to look like products are literally sitting on more products, which is definitely not what we want. So in order to get a much more smooth finish, once we do have so many different products on us, we're going to want to have a really good base. So first of all, I'm going to moisturize. It does not have to be very much. I'm just taking a little bit, putting it on the back of my hand, and I'm just going to go ahead and moisturize. I have combination skin, so either way, it is important. If you have dry skin or if you have more mature skin, this is also going to be a really, really vital step because if you have any dryness, makeup is just going to cling to it and accentuate it. I'm also going very, very lightly and moisturizing on top and underneath my eyes as well. Also, my lips, I already put a lip balm on them, but if you haven't at this time, it would be great to moisturize your lips as well. Okay, now that our skin prep is done, it's time to actually start going in with makeup products, but if you know me, I never go to my foundation without doing my eyebrows first. So I'll do my eyebrows really quickly and we'll be right back. All right, I'm back and the brows are filled. Okay, this very, very first step is only gonna be for those who need it. So if you have really oily skin, this is gonna be a tip for you. I would not recommend this for people with dry skin or mature skin. So just for those who need a little bit of extra help with the oil control. As somebody with combination skin, I do tend to get oily in my T-zone area. So right around here in the middle of the forehead, around my nose, and just a little bit kind of like going onto the cheeks that you can see, and of course on my nose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the Maybelline Fit Me Loose Finishing Powder, this is in the shade 10 Fair Light. You can use a translucent powder or you can use one that has just a little bit of color. This one has a little bit of color. I'm gonna pick some up on my brush and tap the excess. You can use any kind of soft fluffy brush or even a sponge if you would prefer. This is the Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH07 brush that I'm using and just with the little bit that is on, I'm going to start tapping in the areas very lightly where I know that I'm going to get shiny later. A little bit going over the apples of my cheeks. So as you can see, this side is quite shiny there still and this side is a lot more matte. Just a very, very light coating over the areas where you know you're going to get really oily. And of course, in between the brows as well. And I'll also do a little bit more and put it right across my chin because the middle of my chin also tends to get a little bit shiny. Now, what this does, if you're wondering, because it is a little bit out of the ordinary to put powder before your foundation, it's gonna kind of act a little bit as a veil. So when you do start to get to those oils, instead of letting that sweat go right directly into that liquid foundation that you're gonna put on top, this kind of acts as a mini barrier to kind of have a little bit of something for the oil to go into first before it has a chance to disrupt your foundation. We are almost ready to go in with our foundation, but not quite yet. Right before that, in order to set this powder in place and really lock it in, I'm going to be going in with a setting spray. So this is the Makeup Revolution Super Fix Super Hold Misting Spray. Now, why are we going in with setting spray before we go in with foundation? Well, we want to lock this product that we just set down in place and we want to work in thin layers. If we never kind of reset and refresh the skin, it's going to be very easy to get a cakey look. We want to look fresh, beautiful, flawless, and smooth the whole day. So in order to do that, we had to do a few extra steps. So I'm going to do a quick spritz of this. Make sure that my whole face is pretty well coated with that. 
It is important that you give it just a little bit of time to set before going in with the foundation. Now we are finally ready to go in with the foundation. The skin is properly prepared for all the products going on top to make it last as long as possible. For foundation today, I am going to be using the Maybelline Superstay Full Coverage Foundation. I'm going to be mixing two shades. This is not going to match my actual skin, but I wanted to make it a little darker to be closer to the shade that I am on the competition and the way I'm showing you my products. These are a drugstore foundation. I use them pretty much for every competition and on a lot of my clients. I always get really good feedback on the foundation that it stayed the whole day and I'm a really big fan of this formula. These are in the shades 110 Porcelain and 312 Golden Doré. And lastly, with those two shades of foundation, I like to mix in my primer with my foundation. Most of the time, I just mix one to two pumps of this primer in with my foundation. I mix it up on the back of my hand before I apply it, and it's pretty much two in one. So this is the Urban Decay All Nighter Ultra Glow Face Primer. I'm a big fan of this primer because I feel like it adds a lot of extra longevity to my makeup products that are already 24 hour wear. There are two of these. There is just the regular All Nighter Primer and the Ultra Glow. I prefer the Ultra Glow because it does have some very nice skin ingredients to help keep your skin even more hydrated while it is lasting longer. Like I said, we don't want the skin to dry out, even if we do have this on for 12, 16, 18 hours, it's very easy for your skin to lose moisture. So this adds a little bit of extra skincare, a little bit more of those ingredients to help keep the moisture in your skin longer to keep the foundation looking fresher. Now that I have this lovely concoction on my hand, I'm going to go ahead and mix it up with my brush so it's all evenly incorporated. So taking just a little bit, I'm going to go ahead and start on my cheeks where I need the most coverage. As you can see, this doesn't match my skin tone completely, but like I said, we're making it a little bit darker on purpose. What I like to do is work in sections of my face. So right now I'm starting on one section of my face and then after I've layered it on, I'm gonna go ahead and take my sponge. I'm using the Real Technique sponge and I'm just gonna go ahead and start blending it in. I like to apply with the brush first to add coverage where I need the most coverage and then going in with a sponge on top helps to make it really, really smooth. Now, as I'm blending in the other side, I want to make sure that I'm not adding too much product right around my mouth and nose. Because we do a lot of talking and this area of the face is actually moving quite a lot, we don't want to have too much product build up there because the more that your face moves, the more you're going to move the product. So I'm going to use a little bit more of a lighter hand right in this area so we have less product buildup so there is less chance for it to move around later. Last area is going to be applying to the forehead and I want to make sure I don't apply too much right around the eyebrows because it's going to be harder to blend out later. So I leave it a little bit lighter right around the edges of my brows. Then with my beauty blender, I'll make sure and press it in closer to my skin to make sure there's not a white line, but there's not too much product buildup right around the brows that we already spend time filling in. And I'm also gonna use a very, very light hand going down the bridge of my nose, right in between the brows because we want coverage there, but we don't want too much product. The more product you apply, the harder it's going to be to blend out. So just keep that in mind. Now that everything's blended in, you'll probably notice that right around my eyes, it does look a little bit white. And that is because on purpose, I didn't want to bring the foundation too close up to under my eye. So I don't want to do a heavy layer of foundation and a heavy layer of concealer and a heavy layer of powder. I actually use a very, very full coverage product with a lot of longevity so I can use less product, get more coverage in a more thin and even layer. So when we're adding more products on top, it doesn't look like our makeup is really building. It just looks like we have a flawless base. So I did a very thin layer of my foundation and I purposely wanted to leave the under eye area a lot more blank because that is going to be the job of concealer to brighten and highlight that area and I can just do it right now on top of my skin as a fresh layer instead of having a whole nother layer right on top of my foundation. For concealer, I have two really, really great drugstore options. The first one is going to be the JCAT Stay Assurance Concealer. I do believe it's about seven or eight dollars at ulta.com or on jcatbeauty.com and this you guys, this is insane. It covers anything. It is super comfortable on the skin. It doesn't look heavy, but it is full coverage and it 
really brightens. And also another great drugstore option is the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer Satin Finish. The e.l.f. line does have a few different concealers. I believe they have like a matte one and the hydro one. I really like the hydrating one. Like I explained before, the more hydrating products we use, that actually it is going to be easier to keep our makeup in place than only using super dry and super matte products because that is just going to break up on us eventually later if the skin is not properly cared for. So because it's a much more hydrating formula, it is also super, super full coverage and feels really comfortable on my skin. I think I'm gonna go ahead and use the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. So one important thing is I'm not gonna place this actually too close to my eye. I'm gonna place it a little bit more underneath. So as you can see, that is not right in my inner corner. The reason why I put it like this instead of super close to the eye is because when we take our beauty blender to blend everything out, if it is really close to my eye and I'm trying to blend it, it's just pushing the product up further and it's not really spreading out. When I actually am using the sponge, it is going to blend everything out a little bit more seamlessly and a little bit more of a thin and even layer as opposed to taking the concealer and putting it exactly where I need to be concealed and then blending it in one place. It's not going to blend into my foundation as easy that way. So now taking that beauty sponge and just starting to blend out. I'm making sure to really blend around the corner of my eye because personally I can get red there but just make sure to really blend it in all the crevices to make sure that it is super blended. Always, always, always make sure to get in the crevice of the nose because it's super easy to miss that spot. Okay, now we get to the setting part. So I am gonna be using my loose setting powder again from Maybelline. This time I'm gonna be using a sponge to apply instead of my brush. I'm gonna take the pointy part of my sponge into the cap and just roll it over, tap off the excess. We don't need too, too much. It can be very easy to over set your under eye or over bake. So how I'm going to apply it differently is that I'm going to roll this into my skin and press very lightly instead of just pressing it onto my skin and letting it sit there. And the second reason that this is gonna be a little bit different is because I am starting from the outside rather than starting from the inside. It's very easy when you have powder on a brush or on a sponge, when you go right away in the under eye, a lot of product can come off on that first press and a lot of it is going to get stuck right in that area where we don't want it to crease as much. If we don't want it to crease as much, we can't put too much product. So starting from the outside, very, very lightly, you'll see by the time I get to the inner corner, I actually have far less product than on the outside. I'm going to roll it again, just in place, this time a little bit lower, not as far up into the corner, kind of rolling and pouncing on the under eye. Now, I wish you guys could see my under eye because it seriously looks flawless. Like this side looks pretty flawless, but of course we have to set it. And right now this under eye looks really flawless. It doesn't look too matte. It doesn't look too shiny. It's not getting crepey on me. It's not too much product buildup. It is just the perfect amount. And my beauty blender of course is still damp. So just pressing it very lightly is going to help it melt into the skin rather than just leaving it on top. Now using a similar technique, I'm just gonna take a little bit and go across the other areas that we highlighted with the concealer. This technique just really helps the pressed powder melt into the foundation flawlessly without looking like it's adding more coverage or more product. So now before we go any further, I'm gonna take my setting spray again. You can use any setting spray as long as it's gonna hydrate you. And I'm gonna give my face another layer. So I want to make my skin pretty much wet again. And we want to keep adding layers of makeup and then setting spray. Add layers of makeup and a setting spray. The setting spray really helps everything melt into one another. You can't just do setting spray at the end. I mean, of course you can, 
but really doing it at critical points while doing your foundation is going to help set it so much better. So for the next section, you have two options. You have cream products and powder products for bronzer, foundation, and highlight. Either set of products are good. It is really up to what you prefer and what you find looks the best on you. My number one tip is if you want to make it last literally all day, is use a combination of both. So I'm going to use a cream bronzer and a liquid blush and then on top of that I'm going to add my a light layer of my powder bronzer and my powder blush kind of to set it in place. It is not necessary for you to use both types of products on top of each other all the time. I would only do this on my super, super long days, like if I have five, six, seven rounds. I wouldn't really do this if I'm just having maybe one round or two rounds at the competition. It's not necessary, but like I said, it's going to be a 12 plus dance sport sweat proof foundation routine, then I'm going to show you all the steps that I would do. So starting out with my cream bronzer, this is going to be the Jaclyn Cosmetics cream bronzer. This is in the shade Nakey. I'm obsessed with this. This is great for like my everyday makeup, but it actually doesn't matter because we don't need to make it really dark with the cream bronzer. When you have a powder bronzer, that is when you're going to be able to add a little bit more depth and shading. The cream bronzer is kind of just to help the powder that you're going to put on top stay in place and last even longer. So it's okay if it's not the perfect deep shade of the tan that I am right now. So I'm going to get my beauty blender nice and coated in that bronzer and I'm just going to start where I would put my bronzer just starting at the back just patting in place because this bronzer really really blends itself this part is pretty self-explanatory you're gonna put it where you would put your normal bronzer so i'm starting at the back moving forward over my cheeks up into the hairline and concentrating it a little bit more on the outsides of my forehead and just a little bit going across this bronzer is just so pretty and so easy to use <laughs> Now again, even though I'm done bronzing with that product, it doesn't look like I'm super bronzed yet, but that was more just as a base to help cling my powder bronzer that is going to be deeper to go on top and to stay for the whole day. Now moving on to blush, I have a few different blush options for you. So the first one is going to be the Blush by Made by Mitchell, and then also another option that is going to be a lot easier to get your hands on if you are in the States is going to be the e.l.f. Putty Blush. This is a really nice formula as well. It's very, very easy to use. It blends seamlessly. I wouldn't use this just as my only blush for the competition because I do find that this one fades. But as a base, it would be really, really good to use as well if you don't have blush or if you don't have another liquid or cream blush product that you already like using. So I'm going to be going in with my Made by Mitchell blush and this is in the warmer shade. So this is going to be called Posy Rosy. I'm going to go ahead and start at the top and come down just a little bit. I'm not gonna get too close, I'm not gonna go too far, but I am gonna do it rather high compared to low and on my cheek. Using the same sponge, we're gonna go ahead and blend that out. I'm keeping the product very, very high. I'm not blending this way. I'm pouncing up and out, up and out. Okay, now that the blush is all blended in, I know it looks like I went a little heavy handed on the blush, on me personally, blush fades very easily, so I do like to do extra when I'm applying because to allow a little bit of that wiggle room for it to fade but still look bright on the skin. So now that we have all of our cream products down, it is time to go back into the powders. I typically like to use two different pressed powders. Now, they're the same powder but two different shades. This is the Maybelline Fit Me Matte and Poreless. The first shade that I like to use for brightening my under eye is 110, and then what I'm going to use very lightly on the rest of my face is the shade 128 warm nude. I just like to get a little bit up on this brush and this really brightens my under eye. You do not need a lot, a little goes a long way with this product. And I'm just going to place it right in that inner corner, tapping very very lightly and going over pretty much where we already set it, but just with a little bit different formula and this time I'm a little bit more pressing it in as opposed to like rolling it or with a sponge. Same thing as usual, I like to place this light shade in all the areas that we put our concealer and that we already set earlier. 
Now I'm gonna go in with the warm nude shade 128, which is going to be a lot closer to the skin tone that I actually am right now. And I'm gonna go ahead and use a foundation brush. Now this is the Peaches and Cream PC16. I'm gonna take that powder, I'm gonna get it really well concentrated in my brush, tap off the excess, and I'm going to press in the areas that are not bronze blushed or highlighted. Again, I'm not doing this for coverage. I'm not doing this to get any more color or evenness. We are already really quite even. I'm just doing this to really press everything together as like a final powder. I would do this step as well across the jaw and down the neck into whatever tanning that you had to blend into. For my bronzer today, I am going to be using this little NARS Mini Laguna bronzer. This one's pretty self-explanatory. Go ahead and just bronze your face as you usually would in the same areas that you put your cream bronzer. Next up, we're going to do blush. Today I'm using the Revlon blush. This is in the shade 003, Marvelous. It is such a great drugstore blush. It lasts a really long time. It blends really easily and it's super pigmented. So a little bit goes a really long way. So just taking a little bit of that on my brush and just going right over where we already placed that Made by Mitchell blush. Like literally you can see the difference from this side to this side and I put only a teeny tiny bit of this on and it blended by itself pretty much perfectly because of already all the preparation that we did before. And that's pretty much all you have to do. I like to do a little bit on my nose and I like to do a little bit on my temples as well, but almost like you can barely even see it. I pretty much just do it for fun. <laughs> Okay, and before highlight, of course, because we just put a bunch more powder products on, I'm gonna go ahead and give myself another spray. And at this point, try not to move your face so much, so don't move your eyes so much, your nose or your lips too, too much, because we really don't want the makeup to be moving while it is setting. Now that that setting spray is pretty much set down completely, I'm gonna go ahead and highlight. Today I am using the Jaclyn Cosmetics highlighting palette, and I'm gonna go ahead and I am actually gonna use the shade Sparks, which is this yellow toned one down here. This is a Morphe Jaclyn Hill JH09 brush, very, very precise brush. I like to go over the apples of my cheeks you can see just that tiny bit added so much brightness there, but when I look straight, it doesn't look ashy. It doesn't look like I have a stripe there. You only see it when my face is hitting the light and it's very complimentary to all of the undertones and shades that we used on my skin today. Of course, highlighter is completely up to you. Some people like to be super glowing. Some people prefer to be completely matte. Whatever level of highlight that you are comfortable with, go ahead and do that. I like to go over my cupid's bow, also a little bit down the bridge of my nose, not too, too much, and just a little bit on the edge of my nose just to bring a little bit of highlight and brightness to the center of my face as well. So at this point, my face makeup is done. Usually at this point, my eyes are actually done too because I usually do my eye makeup before my face. In this instance, I'm actually just gonna throw on a little bit of mascara and a lipstick just so we can do the outro without looking too crazy. All right, you guys, this is the final look for today. At the very, very end of the makeup look, of course, you have to do one final spray of your setting spray, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. And now you have successfully completed your 12-hour sweat-proof foundation routine for dance sport competitions. Just wanna give you a quick close-up of my face of my under eye, of my skin, of my complexion. I really love using these techniques and hopefully you guys love them too. Definitely let me know in the comments if you did learn anything new and if you're gonna try it out and how it worked for you. I would love to see what you guys have to say or drop any of your own tips below that you've learned over the years. I would love to hear those as well. If you wanna catch up with me on social media, you can check me out at Ricky Taylor Dubovic and Ricky T Beauty as always on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, everything, all of that stuff. All right, guys, I think that is everything. Again, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.